Welcome back, Wolfpack, to our tutorial series for On Air Airline Manager. On Air Airline Manager is a program that interacts with various flight simulators, including the new Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020, to give you an option of playing the game in a career mode. In today's tutorial, I will do a check ride so that now, you can be prepared for what kind of commands the instructor will be throwing out there and so that you won't be surprised in your first check ride as I was. This check ride will take place in Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020. For your reference, I do have my check ride settings set to realistic. It is worth noting that from the three check rides that I have personally done, there have been different instructions from each instructor, so I will try to include all of the instructions that I have personally experienced in this video. Please don't forget to hit that subscribe button as I will have several on-air and flight simulator tutorials including renting and purchasing aircraft, hiring employees, and how I choose to make money in on-air. I mentioned in the renting and purchasing aircraft video that you will eventually want to upgrade your planes to haul more cargo and passengers. Just like your employees, you must also be appropriately certified to fly the various types of aircraft in the game if you choose to fly them. The first step in that process after acquiring the aircraft is to make sure that you and the aircraft that you want to check ride are in the same location in the on-air live operations map as you are in the flight simulator. In the on-air flight setup, you should also make sure that you have at least 30 to 40 percent fuel on board and it's a good idea to remove any cargo or passengers from the aircraft so that the aircraft responds to your control inputs immediately. My next step is to set a basic flight plan in the flight simulator to make our check ride as easy as possible. Make sure that your departure and your arrival airports are the same. In my first check ride of the caravan, I must have inadvertently set the arrival airport to a different airport and not realized it. After a one hour long stressful check ride and not knowing how I was doing or what was coming next, I stuck a near perfect landing, but the instructors failed me because I landed at the wrong airport. It turns out that the instructor had passed me on everything except the landing location and I had to repeat the entire one hour check ride again. After that experience, I started throwing in a pattern of nav points around the departure airport. That way I could get back to where I needed to be after the flight instructions. Once we have the flight plan set up, we can do one of two things. We can go from right from the live operations map to aircraft details, and we can click the check ride button up here on the top. Another option is to go to my company and aircraft, find the aircraft that you're looking to check ride. Again, making sure that you're there. You can click more and you can click check ride here. And once you hit check ride, it will automatically start talking to flight simulator, so be ready, and it will start barking instructions at you. I think we're set. We are set in the, uh, in the aircraft on the runway. Uh, our flaps are ready to take off. Our lights are on, and I think we're ready to rock and roll. So uh, we're going to go ahead and give this a shot. Airborne time log. Fly runway heading. Continue to climb. Left, heading 140, climb to 11,000 feet. All right, 11,000 feet, uh, left heading 140. Just a couple of tips. Start on the runway. It will shorten the amount of time needed to accomplish the check ride, and the process is a little bit less stressful starting on the runway, and it eliminates all that startup and taxi. Learn the aircraft in the simulator before the check ride, including general aircraft familiarization, cockpit layout, takeoff and landing procedures, and how the aircraft handles. This check ride shouldn't be the first time you jump into the aircraft, or any aircraft. Right, we're coming up on 11,000 feet. We're flying at 100 and, uh, 140 degrees, uh, so southeast. Should be getting more uh, further orders here in a few seconds. Now, maintain 11,000 feet and heading 140. Turn left, heading 100, descend to 7,000 feet. All right, so left heading 100, descending to 7,000 feet. Just set our autopilot, uh, the heading bug over to 100. We've already made that turn, and then uh, our vertical speed we're using to uh, get down to at 1,000 feet per minute, down to 7,000 feet. So again, definitely make sure you're allowed to use the autopilot during your check rides, and I highly suggest you do. Use your heading bug for heading instructions and use your altitude hold, and I personally use the vertical speed settings for climbing and descending. This takes a lot of concentration off your plate when you're trying to get on task. I end up getting sidetracked, I can't uh, keep the plane steady, I, I blow past uh, the heading he wants me at or the altitude he wants me at, so definitely use the autopilot if you can. 
Alright, we're getting uh, to be around 7,000. Aircraft should level, level itself out here. Now, maintain 7,000 feet and heading 100. Turn right, heading 280. Climb to 8,500 feet. So right heading 280, and we're going up to 8,500 feet. Let's go ahead and set our altimeter for that. Vertical speed on, and we'll go up at about 500 feet. That'll take us about three minutes to get there. Definitely don't panic on how long it takes to get to the instructor's last command. On my first check ride, it took me several minutes to get to a specified heading or altitude. I actually blew past the altitude and the heading, had to come back on task, and uh, I still passed that portion of the check ride. Now, maintain 8,500 feet and heading 280. All right. Looking pretty good. And like I said before, autopilot makes a world of difference uh, once you get used to how the autopilot works and you're able to set it uh, somewhat efficiently. I don't, know, I don't know if what you would call me is efficient, but um, once you start to understand the uh, ins and outs of how it works, it's, uh, it's a lot easier. Turn left, heading 70, descend to 7,500 feet. All right, so left to 70. Again, just because it uh, is quicker to go to the right to 7-0, I'm pretty sure you would fail the check right if you uh, if you did that. So I want to make sure that uh, you're doing exactly what he says. Turn right, heading 220, descend to 6,000 feet. All right, turning right to 220. Now, maintain 6,000 feet and heading 220. Now. Return and land at your departure airport with an appropriate IFR or VFR approach. All right, so that's the end of the in-flight. Don't forget your radio and tower communications for takeoffs and landings. I think in the check ride that I failed, I don't remember if I forgot to call in my intention to land at the appropriate airport, and that could have been my reason for failure. There's the flight plan that we had set up. That way I could uh, find it relatively easy and get back to uh, where we need to be. It's the right airport. <laughs> nice. That's what you want to hear right there. It's the right airport. Uh, if you don't hear that, you're uh, you're going to land in the wrong spot. I did not get that alert when I was uh, doing my first check ride in the Grand Caravan. landed let's see how we did did a little uh, skip landing there but not great but we made it end of flight registered in on air company all right thank you you passed your practical exam four out of four exercises succeeded all right end of flight we passed our exam four out of four exercises uh, succeeded now when we come into the manage screen for me I have a multi-engine turboprop land. And again, I have this certification now. I can fly any multi-engine turboprop aircraft, not just the B-350. If you enjoyed this tutorial or you learned something, please drop a like and consider hitting that subscribe button and setting your notifications to all. Check out the next video in this tutorial series popping up on your top left. Or if you'd like to catch my Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 career mode series using On Air, check out the playlist that is popping up on your bottom left. On your right is another video that YouTube thinks you might enjoy on the channel. If you also enjoy survival and military games, consider subscribing to my second channel showing up right now. There are several other content trees. options in the links in the pinned comments or in the description down below. Click any one of those links and we will see you over there.